What up, what up, what up, what up, everybody's Friday. I'm excited. I'm Pastor G. I'm Lady T. My I got her glasses over here. Now she can see. We're excited about this Friday. Friday. As you can tell, we're running a little bit behind schedule. As you can tell, but we're still here. We're still here. A delay is not a denial. <laughs> Please believe that your delay is never a denial. <laughs> it's uh, a blessing to be alive, first of all, as I always, 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 always say, it's always a blessing to be alive. It's, all, it's always a blessing to under, be alive and, and healthy reasonable as, as you say reasonable health and strength i always consider all those things a tremendous incredible gift from god to be alive first of all and got a reasonable portion of health and strength now since we are a uh, people that are maturing in age i'm not going to reveal your age but uh since we are in that i'm uh in my uh 50s uh, I thank God, you know, sometimes I feel some pains that I don't th necessarily think uh, should be there. I don't, I don't, I don't get it sometimes, but I always know this, that pain is a sign that you remain. Uh. Not that you want to pain all the time, but hey, be thankful that there's some days uh, that uh, 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 you feel something and you say, oh, that hurt, but it's a reminder that you're still alive. Still here. Still alive. You know, you know, once you see, see things clearly in God, you'll understand that, you know, sometimes you get up, as they say, on the wrong side of the bed. And uh, you don't do everything right when you get up on the wrong side of the bed. We'll just say it like that. Even in that. You realize that if you if if uh, if you have the grace enough to get yourself together, that's a blessing right there. That's a blessing right there. That's a blessing right there. So we'll never be able to live without God. Now we are very thankful today. I want you to hang with me today. I got some incredible news. I got some incredible news. My wife want to. She want to put some juice on my lips. She just want to kiss me. It's okay to say you want to get that. Tell the world you want to kiss me, baby. Can I kiss you? All right. Okay. If you're saying I got some chapped lips, that's okay. Thank you for that, babe. Thank you for that. I'm excited now. I'm really hyped up. Uh, I am thankful today. Now, here, here it is. Here it is. Thank you guys for being in house. Thank you for being here. Uh, uh, Pastor Deidre, Regina, Strength of God. Hell in the hell. Uh, is he ill in hell? Let me see. Come on, oh. in this hell. <laughs> we love you, L. Yes, we do. Uh, Pastor Nolan Brown in Dallas is in the house. Jonathan, Sonia. Is in the house from Atlanta. Tina Hatley, thank you so much, Tina, for being in the house. Again, Elle is in the house. Lasagna uh, Ford, thank you so much. Blessings, blessings, blessings. I'm watching your video tonight. Thank you. I know you say you got up on the wrong side of the bed one day. That's okay. God is good. Uh, 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 Nico. Nico's hey, in the house. Christy Jones from Cali is in the house. Now, I'm going to need your help. Sarah in New York is in the house. Now, now I'm going to need your help. Uh, we were running late. I didn't get a chance to really. I usually sent out. A reminder to everybody I didn't. So I need you right now to go and remind everybody that Pastor G is right now in the house. We got some great news today. Ah, this is not on the script. <laughs> this is not on the script. I want to read something that just dropped in my spirit. Let me find it real quick. I want to share this real quick. I want to, I want to, uh, there's, there's those of you that are listening to me. Uh, Nico say, hey, loves. Yes. Nico, we've been in your area several, several times. Amen. Oh, huh? Nico, remember our church? Yes. Arkansas, Dallas, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, Nico. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you, Gloria Whitmore. That's my sister now. Hey, Gloria. Okay, I want I want to read something real quick. I want to jump off. I want to jump off. I want to jump something off. Uh, where am I? At? What do I want to go to? Uh, Isaiah sixty. Isaiah 60. I want to read this. We're in lunchtime. Now, this is called I Got the Treasure. I want to show you something that is very important moving forward. Moving forward. I want to, I want to show you something. Pastor Deidre, thank you. Uh, I, I, want to, I, want to, I want to show you something moving forward. This is going to be very important moving forward. For those of you, uh, I, and I understand something here. It's very important. Uh, a lot of times uh, we lose our momentum. We lose our aggressiveness because 
if you work for something or work on something that you really don't have definition as to what the end results are or how do I get there, sometimes it may you lose the, the zeal or the desire to continue. It's not that you don't uh, desire to work, but if it, you don't know what it is, sometimes it's just difficult. It kills your drive. Yeah, it kills the drive. And so, so many that are listening to me right now, I know you are here. I know that you you have been in a strange season in your life. And uh, I don't want you to miss the moment. Thank you, Leroy. What's up, Leroy Sutton? Thank you. And Corey Robinson, that's my cousin too. Corey's in the house. Um, I don't want you to miss this moment. This is a very specific moment right now that we've entered in, into a timing. I, I would call it a time in God that is, un, is different. It is unprecedented, I believe. I believe that it is a sanction. I believe that it's incredible. I believe that there are things that we should be ready to accomplish in this season that we did we honestly just did not have the 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 uh, uh endorsement in other seasons. Now it doesn't mean that God was not working, it's just that there are certain times that he released <coughs> what he wants to happen in a certain season through certain people, through certain men. That is not uh uh, 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 our call that is a God call, and so if you don't have clarity on what it is and how uh, you should go about it, sometimes just through that you'll lose your vigor, you'll lose the desire. You just want to know. I, I mean, there's a lot of you that are hard workers, and you help people when you figure that they figured out what they are doing. It's like when you come in and asking someone to make an investment in your business. Uh, they want to see a, a, a five-year plan. Tell me where you're going. Uh, uh, the financing is not the issue. I need to know that when I invest into you that I'm not just wasting my time. Yeah. And so this is a season right here uh, that I wanted to open up today. And I wanted to share some things because there's some of you that are working. Uh, you have been uh, designed to work. This is a season like none other. It's very unusual. Here it is. Please hear it. It's a very unusual season. There are some things that you are going to get prompted in your spirit that's going to be very unusual. There are some unusual moves that you're going to make, have to make. It's going to be different. It's going to even catch you off guard because you never had this level of prompting in your spirit before. Well, the reason why you've never been prompted on this level is because the timing was not right. It's not just by chance. Don't allow uh, uh, you yourself to operate at a default. If you do, you won't make this move. You will do what you always done, and you're going to get what you always got. Yeah. And God does not change that. You can pray, 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 pray. But what God desires most is that you be obedient when you hear the call. And sometimes it takes everything for me to hear outside of what I've always heard. I become comfortable there. And so the maturity level, when I become mature, it means God allows me to uh, 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 trust me with greater, uh, trust me with greater responsibilities. And so I have to become very mature. And so God does not even give until I am mature enough to handle. Now that's a grace move. That is a grace move. That is a grace move. And so now in this season of hearing, we are hearing things again, or we are being prompted of things that we've never been prompted of before. We, 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 we are hearing and being prompted of things. A lot of times the thing that you hear and that you are being prom getting prompted in your spirit, you don't necessarily want to hear. You don't necessarily, like, I don't want to hear that. I don't want to do that because when I hear and when I do, it will cause me definitely to be ostracized, talked about. Uh, uh, but I'm here to tell you that for you to walk in, this is not a prayer thing. Prayer doesn't change this. Uh, and so it's, it's going to change some of the, the ideas that we've been believing. Uh, 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 I always reference uh, 2 Corinthians uh, the 10th chapter, verse number 6 after talking about the warfare and things, it says you got to have a readiness to avenge or, or in some, in some translation, revenge, uh, disobedience with your obedience. In other words, you don't pray and God uh, brush over. He says, uh, here's the prompting here, here. Here's how, here's how you get by this is being ready this time 
to go back and, 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 and hear what I told you to do and do it. That will solve the problem. It's not praying over the problem. It's being obedient where you have been disobedient. And so when God comes in, he drops in our life and tells us, here's what I need to happen. He doesn't, he doesn't go through the list of things that I go through to see uh, if I'm ready or should I. He says, no, I'm God. I, you've been bought with a price. This is what I designed your life to be. And now I'm ready for you to move at my prompt without you giving me any excuses. And what I suggest in this season, that you don't be honorably disobedient. What does that mean? You honor man so much that you can't be obedient to God. This is a season that he, uh, perhaps in the past, he might have looked over and said, oh, I got you. I know you, I know, I, 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 I figured you would, but this time he says, no, I'm ready to do what I'm ready to do and I'm ready to do it with you. And so this season is going to be a very strategic season that you're going to have to hear outside of what you've heard. <laughs> Life changes. At, 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 at. This is what you call resurrection season. Let's say it like that. I know we just went through the birth of Christ and then Easter's not here. But here's, here's what I want to, a season of reconciliation, a season of record, uh, uh, resurrection. Here, please hear this. Please hear this. A resurrection is something uh, that is revived from the dead. Right. Please hear. Something that is revived from the dead. Now, I know the uh, first thing we go through is a dead body being revived. But I want to do spiritual talk, right? So here it is. God says he's about to resurrect. <laughs> But here's your, here's, here's your obligation. Here's your obligation to the agreement of God. Here's your obligation. You got to let something die. If you want to see a resurrection in this season, you got to let something die. This is the spiritual connotation. He's saying there's something that you are letting live that you need to let die so that he can resurrect. Because perhaps some things have gone wrong. And what you are letting live right now don't look like what God birthed. You have allowed something. And, and, so, and so we have to be very careful because as we live through this life, there are things that happen, tragic moments that happen, uh, 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 different situations that happen, that sculpture us into or create us into something that God did not birth. And now we are living it and we are calling it our truth. We're saying, this is my truth. No, it's your situation that you have uh, been, been uh, uh, pushed into, and now you call it your truth. Because you've learned how to live it. You learn how to live it. Now, that's one of the, that's one of the constructive uh, uh, words, uh, 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 a destructive word. I say constructive words, but I say, let's say a destructive word that, that culture has. Uh, 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 it's my truth. There's so many people say they're living their truth. Uh, I need to drop something in your spirit that's very powerful. You don't have a truth. Please hear me. You don't have a truth. Now, let me explain it because I don't want you to argue with me. I'm up the, uh, uh, Jesus says this. Jesus, I'm going to believe him. Jesus says that when the spirit of truth is coming. Now, watch this. Watch this. At that very declaration, the spirit of truth, it just said, I don't have ownership of it. It means that it's a, a possession of God. It's a possession of God. It is, it is a, a, a private possession of God. It's his spirit. When the spirit of truth, that means that I cannot own truth. God has to lend it or give it to me. And so when I say that I'm living my truth, I'm actually saying I'm living a situation that is void of present revelation. I have accepted a situation that is void of truth. I can't say that what has happened in my life, even if it's happened multiple times, it's my truth. It was tragic, but it wasn't your, it's not your truth. Mm -hmm. it's, it's currently happening, but it's not your truth. This is how the enemy gets so many people. He, he, he repetitively do a thing and make people believe that that thing is them now. And so now they are governing themselves or, or uh, calling themselves what they keep experiencing. And that's never, a, that's never a good moment. Please hear me. And so now here's what God is saying. This is a season of resurrection. In other words, there's some things that, uh, 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 that he birthed 
for a specific calling and purpose. And now through the tragedies of life, through the situations of life, through the teachings of life, through a whole bunch of things in life, we have become something. And we call it us. And God says, if you let that die, I'm going to cause a resurrection to happen. I'm going to raise you again. And then this time you're going to raise with the power that you never experienced before your death. But it's going to take a discipline to go through the death. It's going to take a discipline for you to let go of all that people have called you, all that you think that you are, because of some experiences, good and bad, that cause you to come to a place. This is very powerful. Uh, I'm hearing something in my spirit right now. Again, uh, uh, Genesis verse uh, uh, chapter 2, verse 7. It's a very powerful passage. Very powerful passage. Now watch it. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Uh, it says, and from the dust of the ground, watch this, from the dust of the ground, God formed man. And he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became. I think this is one of the most profound passages ever, especially in the book of beginnings. Uh, uh, from the dust of the ground, God uh, formed man. Hear it. God formed man. Uh, breathed into his nostrils breath of life, right? And man became a living soul. I think so many times we just ugh, let's, uh, uh, go over passages without even getting the unpacking of the passage. Let me unpack it because it's very important for this very strategic season that you're in. Some people are listening to me. You have went over there and God said, come over here. You are over there when he says, come over here. <laughs> he says, you'll never get over here as long as you're over there. And so in other words, what he's saying, you need to hear before you can get over there. You went there because of what someone else has said and what, let me stay, let me stay focused because that takes me somewhere else. Genesis 2, again, uh, 7, Genesis 2, 7. Watch what the word says. It says, from, and do you have that? Have you looked that up? Uh, in the NIV. And what does it say there? Then the Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground. He yes. breathed the breath of life into man's nostrils, uh -huh. and man became a living person. I felt like an old preacher when I did that. You uh -huh. did. Uh -huh. <laughs> Read. Read. Yeah. I, I love it. <laughs> well, here, here it is. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Uh, uh, that's that's the second move. First move was Genesis 1.26. Now watch this very carefully. See this very carefully. Now I'm speaking to people that right now you're in a situation, you're, 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 you're living from what you call your truth, which is just actually a situation that's more of revelation. It's something that has happened to you over, over, and over that you have allowed to define you. But this season, you are going to be able to walk out of that that you perpetually, over and over, repeatedly had to experience. Mm. You only experienced it because you accepted it. You allowed it to keep coming. You summoned it in because maybe you heard because of the first experience that, that that's who you are. I mean, I, I am not even talking about the tragedies of life all the time. Uh, I'm not just talking about people that have been through tragic situations. There are some vices that men are in and they came from a good place. It was something that they heard from mentors and they decided to be it and now they become monsters because of the mentors and because of what they mentioned <laughs> stay with me now stay with me now now this is very powerful this is very powerful this is for people that have been called for such a time as this you feel in the pool from god like you never pulled before i need you to share this with more people i need you to share this right now share this with more people thank you pastor Nolan brown dallas thank you so much here it comes here it comes genesis is the book of beginnings. The 26th chapter says God uh, uh, formed man in his image and in his likeness. That's where I and what I really am. Uh, two says I got a body, this thing that I look at in the mirror. That's not what God created. What I see in the mirror is not what God created. Woo! Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. 26 is who I really am. 27 is what he gave me to actually accomplish uh, that that I am. You need a body to accomplish that that you are. Spirit without a body in the earth is illegal. Please hear that. 
is illegal. I'm not going to teach that message because it takes too long. But I, I'm needing you to hear me very clearly today because you're in a shifting season. You're, you're in a shifting season. There's a, an incredible shifting in the spirit right now. And if you are not hearing what God is saying, no matter how much good work you've done, you will not be included in this next season. I, I just got through teaching a message in uh, uh, 2 Samuel 6. And that David, who was the king for the season, desired again to retrieve the anointing of God again. And you know this text that as him having a good uh, uh, ideal, him wanting to do something good, uh, the retrieval of the anointing or the presence of God is a very good thing that we should desire. But God showed us through that passage that you can have a good heart, you can have a good desire, and don't follow an instruction and it causes death in your life. Oh it causes death in your life. You can have a good desire, you can have a, 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 a wonderful dream to help but if you don't follow the instruction, I'm telling everybody, there's an instruction, a specific. God tells David, that was a good idea. I, I want to be in where I want to be. But if you don't follow it the way that I and do it specifically to my uh, 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 desire, then there's going to be some depth. And it's going to confuse everybody because they're going to see you as one that is trying to do what God is saying. But you are not following the specific. This is the season of the specific. Please hear me. You got to hear in specifics. It's not going to go like it used to go. It because you know, you know, you know. When 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 I look at this 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 thing, there's so much coming in my spirit right now. When I look at David in Second Samuel, Second uh, Samuel six, you can read it there. The whole story, uh, David going after the ark, Obed Edom. Uh, then you can go to First uh, Chronicles thirteen. Uh, skip 14 because that's about war, 15, 16, and 17. It parallels the story of 2 Samuel 6. Watch this. When David goes for this anointing to pull it in or to retrieve it or to bring the presence of God again into its specific place like we're doing now, there's a presence. And when God is in the uh, 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 building, everything else is subject to it. So every desire, every command and prompt will follow to the obedience of the presence of God. It doesn't mean what your title is, what your ego is, none of that. When God is showing up, everything has to fall subject to that. And it behooves all of us to get in position when that happens, or there will be death. Mm -hmm. it, says, it says, when they get to the threshing floor that the ox stumbled, David had a great desire to pull this anointing to get this anointing back, the presence of God. Remember, even in your desire to seek the presence of God again, you can have this overwhelming feeling, which is great, please. You can have a desire to work in ministry. You can have a desire to do a lot of things, yeah. but God, a zeal, but it's not according to knowledge. Now this is confusing, because I think anytime I have a desire to do something <laughs> that God is good, what well, is good in your sight, but God says I have a specific way that I desire for this thing to happen. I'm getting back to Genesis 2, verse 7. Please stay with me now. And so, and so, and so with this desire, David, and then the text says that Ozai decided at the threshing floor. Now notice that threshing floor, that's very specific and, and, and interesting. How, why is it that the ox stumble at the threshing floor? Why didn't it stumble before the threshing floor? Here's what you must understand. This is a good idea to a desire to bring uh, God's anointing back and put it in its proper place. But I got to do it specifically or there's going to be death, even in my desire to do good. This is why you've been bought with a price. There's a specific design order and ordination on your life. And you must follow the detailed instructions in this season or you'll be doing good things and experiencing death. Oh, I got to tell you this. This is I got to tell you, because I don't want you to be deceived in this season. There's so much that God wants to get and give into your life. But he says, this season, I'm going to restore the glory again. And I cannot have men putting their hands on this. That is not going to give me glory. I don't need any assistance from you in what I'm trying to do. And so if you operate by default, you're going to operate by mentors, standards, and you're going to do. Why do you say this, Pastor? Because Uzzah, the one that put his hand forward, we never did the study on this young man. But now God is revealing that this Uzzah, he was a son, not like, like you know, when the, when the, when the ark gets to Kajot Jerim, into the house of, of Abinadad, uh, Abinadad put his youngest son to keep it. 
Eleazar, but Abinadad had other songs too. And Uzzah happened to be one of those songs that modified the, the carrying thing of the, the cart. And so here it is, he decided that he would put forth his hand to say the art. How did he have enough courage to put his hand forward? Why? Yeah. Because the anointing had been housed in his father's house yes. and he had become comfortable with an anointing that 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 he thought that even though God said don't touch it since it's been in my father's house, I think that I have built up enough credentials. Familiar familiar to touch what God has given in specific orders not to. Please hear me. Please hear me. This next season moving forward is going to be very important that we understand. You cannot operate by default. Even though if your heart is how you have a heart desire to do something, David had a desire to go and get the presence of God from Kajat Jerem at the house of Abinadad and put it into God's specific place. But because they, he had all the celebrational pageantry, he had all of that in order. But one thing that he did not do, he did not follow the specific instruction of God on how you facilitate a move of God. And it caused the death from someone that people that are just trying to help this move of God. Please hear me. And God spoke to me last week. He said, you better tell your people that I'm doing something very powerful and they have to follow the specific because there can be deaths in families that did not follow my instruction because this season is a different season. It's a different instruction. And so here it is. I, I, I was mentioning something that's very powerful. It says when they got to the thrashing floor that Uzziah, the son of Abinadad, the son of the one that had the anointing in his house that he had gotten comfortable, he had gotten complacent with, and he decided, I'm going to move and touch this thing, even though the specifics were, you can't touch. God don't need your assistance. You can build a new cart. God really don't want that. You know, it says Abinadad and his brother built a cart, a brand new carrying device. Here it is. When he got to the threshing floor, I said, why did it happen at the threshing floor? Why didn't it not happen before the threshing floor? Well, well, here's what the spirit prompted and told me. He says, when you understand the literal picture of a threshing floor, here it is. Uh, uh, you have to understand the threshing floor is the place that you separate the wheat from the tariff. <laughs> here it is. Here it is. The wheat from that. Now, 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 notice this. Notice this in, in, in the Gospels. It talks about how an enemy has sown a tariff amongst the wheat. Now, uh, 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 and then, 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 so, 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 uh, uh, it, it's talking about the, how the word of God is when you go to sleep and start working, you wake up, and then you you find out that there's tariffs amongst the wheat. And so the question was asked, should we go and tear up the tariff? And, and, and the reply was, no, please don't mess with the tariff, because while you're tearing up the tariff, you're going to tear up the wheat. He says, but 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 wait, that in the end, the angels will come and separate the wheat from that. Why is this important? It's because the tariffs are identical to the wheat. And the natural eye will not be able to discern a tear from the wheat. Just, just like it is in church. Uh, uh, the tares are planted in church to look just like the wheat, the original. And so here's the problem. The tares always speak louder than the wheat. That's why the world sees the church right now as just a place of, of, of gathering where people take the money because the tares, who are not really the wheat, not the original, not living the lifestyle of the wheat, go out and speak and conduct themselves in a way that people, they look like and dress like the original people that's silent. And so the world looks at the tares and then do a judgment on the wheat. Are y'all following me here? This is very important. So now when we get to the threshing floor, and we're moving right now, we're at the threshing floor. What is the threshing floor? The threshing floor is where you separate the counterfeits from the real. And so in this season of movement of the presence of God, for those that are going to facilitate and God is moving right now, what is going to happen? He's going to allow the tariffs to stick their hands forward so that he can do the distinguishing. That's why in this season, if you are not real, I don't care if the if the anointing has been in your house. 
as I, I don't care if you lived around it. This is the season that you're going to have to be sanctified and consecrated to touch this. If not, it's going to cause death in your house and it's going to confuse everybody. And why? It was so confusing that King David, who was given the, the mandate to move, now is scared of the move of God. There's some of you that are afraid of the move of God because you're seeing the sanctions that are happening because we're seeing people touch something that they're not qualified to touch. Now, David, after trying to move this uh, ark on the back of some animals, not going to go there, not mm -hmm. going to go there. Uh, now, now looks and, and, and sees God break out. As the text said, broke out against us and he died right next to the anointing. Now he dies next to the thing that's supposed to resurrect. How can you die in the presence of that kind of power? It only happens when you're not following the specifics. When that power knows you are not in line with it, what use are you now? <laughs> right there. Who's that? Wednesday, I was awakened to a dream about him. Who? Brendan? Mm -hmm. Brendan Clay? And I knew the name, but I didn't know the face. But the Lord said that it's orchestrated. Everything that is happening right now is orchestrated by the Lord. Amen. It's going to be just like a skit that you see, and it's meant to be shared with the multitude. He's orchestrating everything that is happening in your life. You, you don't understand it, but it's just like a skit. It's yes. just like a skit or a play that he's even put the players in order. And he said that that is where you are in this present time. Prepare for the launch. Brandon Clay. Pastor Brandon Clay. Amen, amen, amen to that word. Amen, amen. Now, now, here it is, here it is. This is all in the line of preparation. It's all in. Mm. We can have a heart to do great things and want to do it because we've seen it done a specific way. But this is a season that we've got to be very careful when we facilitate this move of God. Yes, you've been sanctioned to move it. Yes, God has called you for such a time as this. I'm not only, I'm talking to everybody that's under the sound of my voice. I want you to know that what God is doing, he's in, he's including you because you are hearing this right now, especially to your leadership. And so here it is, David decides, uh, this time God gives him grace again. And he says, I won't try to move or uh, facilitate this anointing uh, and, and, and put it on a new cart. Hmm. Uh, uh, try to try to elaborate, make it elaborate and make it look yeah, good anyway. and make it all of that. I have discovered that this thing is supposed to be carried on the back of holy men. Oh this move is going to be done by holy men, holy men and women. Please hear me. Please hear me. And so this is where we are now. Please, please hear this. I was at Genesis two seven. I had to get that spiel because if somebody need to hear that Genesis two seven uh, from the from the dust of the ground, right? God uh, uh, create uh, 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 formed a man from the dust of the ground and blew his nostrils the breath of life. Here's what I was emphasizing. Genesis 1 26 is who you really are. You are created in dominion for a specific person purpose. God did two things in the beginning. He created. He made form. That's God's design. He created, he made form. He created, he made form. He created, he made form. That's God. He created, he made form. Interesting, uh, 2.7 says, from the dust of the ground, he formed man, breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And God in the beginning, he made, created form. Created, made form. Created, made form. From the dust of the ground, God made. All right. When Genesis 1, 26, he created, okay. <laughs> created, formed, that's God. Now, it says man now gets it and he becomes. That, you got to get this down. God did two things in the beginning. He created, made form is the same thing. Made and formed it. Made and formed the same thing. Creation is one thing that's supernatural. Made form is me taken from what I created supernaturally and I formed something. I made something from that, right? But then it says very specifically at the end of verse seven, it says, man became. Why is this important? Because there are so many people that are calling themselves living their truth when actually it's just you living something that you experienced over and over again and you cause the experience to, or you allow the experience to define you. So the question today, what have you become that God did not create? That's the million dollar question. You have become something 
that God did not create. And now you call it your truth. You don't have a truth. Truth is the spirit according to Jesus and we will believe him. And he says, when the spirit of truth come, that's a sign that you can't own the truth. You can only get it from God. And so now, if I don't have that revelation, I am obligated to live my current situation. And I call it my truth. It is not your truth. It's something that you have been convinced of because it has happened to you over and over and over and over again. Please stay with me. This is the day of your redemption. Remember, this is resurrection season. You have become something uh, uh, that God did not create. There was some tragic moments that caused people to become something, and there's some good moments that caused people to become something. And both of those gamuts didn't end up what, to be what God wanted. And so now he says, I'm doing resurrection. Here's what a resurrection is. It's something that has died and brought back to life. God says he want to resurrect you when you let that die. But until that time, you're going to be living where you're living. He says, if you let it die, I resurrect. I'm waiting on you to die. Why is that important? Because Jesus says, no man can take my life. I'm going to lay it down. In other words, this is not somebody taking this from me. You have to have the will that I'm going to lay it down so I can live again. And then once I rise from this resurrection, I'm going to rise with some power in my hand that I never experienced before. Because God is trying to do something, but he's done with fighting with you. So you need to let you die and let God arise. Now, this is important. I, I brought this out on uh, Wednesday. For those of you that are saying, me, 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 I just want to do me. I just want to do me. I just want to live me. I just want to live me. I just want to do me right now. I just want to. Well, here's the key. And here's what you must understand. As long as you do me, you'll never do the multitude. <laughs> you got to make a choice between me and the multitude. God want to give you the multitude, but he'll never let you have it as long as you want to do me. See, me and multitude are totally two different things. You can't have both. Me is singular. <laughs> multitude is multiple or several. Now, which one do you want? You want to stay single and just do you? Uh, do you want a God? Do you want God to bless you with enough to do the multitude? It's a simple choice. Now, watch this. Isaiah 60. Now, I, I'm, the reason why I'm doing Isaiah 60, you got your notes, <laughs> but throw them away. <laughs> Isaiah uh, chapter 60 is important because this is a season for them, some of you that are listening to me that is the most unusual time of your life because you're, full, you're feeling a tug or a pull that you never experienced before. You're feeling a tug or a pull that you never experienced before, unusual, because you're living in an unusual time. It's a God time. Here's what I want to, I want to make sure you make this clear. Remember, you lose your energy, you lose your vigor when you don't understand the thing. And now you are about to be endowed with information concerning your destination concerning what God has put in you. Look at that. It's 1242. We just started two minutes ago. For real. We just started two minutes ago. Now it's 1242. Now, let me stay on task, on point. Uh, Isaiah 60. Somebody write this in. I'm going to do just verse one. I want to unpack Isaiah 60. Verse number one. Isaiah 60, verse number one. Uh, it says, arise. Now it's time for you to get up from out of your slumber. It's time for you to get up, arise out of your excuses. It's time for you to get up out of the dilemma that you're in. God is about to empower you. You're going to have to make a decision. I want to get up. Now you can, you can, you can continue in this uh, theory or thought that uh, it's just me, oh Lord, me, me. I'm, I'm, I'm. It says arise. When the scripture gives you a command to arise, it's going to empower you to do so. For those that will make a decision, this is the beginning of your brand new life. Get ready. Arise. And it, then it not only does it say arise, you're going to have the power to get up. It says shine. In other words, it's you are not just going to get up and be normal. You're going to get up in purpose. You're going to shine. In other words, God is about to favor you. He says, arise. If for those of you that would take the initiative to get up in this season, 
He says, I am bringing the attention to you. I am bringing, I am allowing the day that I promise you to come to pass in your life. Now, I'm prophesying to somebody right there. Get up. It's the get up season. Now, when you get up, if God tell you arise and you are uh, uh, mid, uh, 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 you in your uh, uh, 30s, 40s, uh, uh, 50s, he's telling you that I'm also allowing you to arise out of something perhaps you've been living in for quite some time. And so when he says arise, he's not telling you to get up in what you already got up in. He's challenging you to change some things today. Please stay with me. And so he says for you to shine, that means that you're going to arise out of some challenges. Now, it's going to be a difficult for you to, I, as I was studying the, the story of David, it says when David actually got the ark to Jerusalem, uh, Michael, his wife, who was uh, the daughter of Saul, it was a prize to David because of the accomplishments of David. Here it is. Uh, she despised him. She despised him. So in other words, here it is. There's something that you've been married to that's probably going to despise this rise. There's something that you've been married to that's going to despise your rise. Now, let me unpack that because that's very important. Now, when I think of marriage, it's not just me being married to her. A marriage is a relationship. Now, what the scripture is actually spiritually, let me unpack it, saying that there's some ideals and some systems that you've been married to your whole life. And now that will despise your new or your rise. It won't allow you to get up in new because of the customs and the traditions and the default things that you've been living in is going to despise. It's not going to make sense to you what God is about to prompt in your spirit. And so it's going to despise something that you've been married to, something that was perhaps a prize to you, that was at one time a prize. Now I'm going to allow you to rise from it if you will say yes. <laughs> the word of God is quick. It's powerful. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. Please hear this. Uh, uh, cutting uh, uh, to the uh, dividing asunder of soul and spirit, bone and marrow. Oh, I got to unpack that. Now, watch this. I want to show you something. Soul and spirit is so identical to us. And it's, it's, it's inseparable, if you will. And so here's what I got to understand. What you are hearing in Revelation is about to be able to discern or cut away or allow you to escape something that you thought you never could escape. <laughs> it's about to allow you freedom. It's going to cut you away from something that seems like it was you and you had to be and you could not escape. This season, the word of God, the revelation is going to cut you away from something that it seems like you could not escape from. So it says, all right, something you've been married to, you are about to be despised by. This new what God is putting in you is going to be despised by your old. You got to make a decision that I'm leaving that because what I see in my future is much greater than what I lived in my old. And so now, once I make that determination, what God says, I'm allowed to shine. I'm about to put the light on you. Arise, shine. We're in Isaiah 60 now, verse number one. Watch what it says here. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. <laughs> You're about to walk in that day that you all God always promised you. Thank you, Dr. Kyle. I got my NOB head on network, I believe. Now watch it. Let me stay focused. Now arise, shine, for thou light has is come. Now let me unpack. I got to go through the whole thing. I got to unpack. For thou what? Light is come. This is why it's such an unusual season that you got to have your ear to God and you got to have revelation, right? Light is a picture of illumination, revelation, information. God began creation with saying, let there be light. He was not talking about sun and moon because that wasn't created until the fourth day. He's talking about information that allow you to start creation. Mm -hmm. God will inform you with an instruction before he release you into your life. And so he says, your light, your information that qualifies you has come. It is now. This is why you're hearing revelation on the next level, because it's going to cut you away from your situation. So arise, shine for your light, your illumination. Revelation is coming. 
information is coming as God did in the beginning of creating. God is creating something again, and he says, I have to do it again like I've done it before. What? I have to let there be light. I have to let that. Now, there's been something that you've been married to that is going to despise your light. Mm -hmm. It's called tradition. Will you be able to leave what you thought was right and all of that to walk into what God has given you? Huh. So your light has come, illumination, revelation, information. This also opens up another picture. Light is a picture of day. Ooh. When the light comes, it says day has come. A new day has come because of your revelation. Stay with me, a new day. Now, here's what is important about a new day, a new light. Jesus says, John chapter 9, he says, you better arise and shine while you have a new day, while you have new revelation, how, while you have this light. Because uh, 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 when night cometh, no man can work. Watch this. We must work the work of him that sent us when while it is day. Because when night cometh, no man can work. Now, this is interesting that Jesus himself would say that. He's telling you that there is a time when you're going to have light, revelation, information, illumination. You better start working. Because there's going to come a time when there's going to be no light. It's going to be night and no man can work. Now, men have tried to work while it was night, but they have not accomplished. Mm -hmm. So this is why it's incumbent of those of you that are hearing the word now, the light that you get to work. And he's about to turn the light on you. He's about to illuminate you. So you have to prepare yourself to be ready to work. Now, remember, again, there's something that you've been married to that won't uh, 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 wonder, uh, 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 let you just go. The kingdom suffered the violence and the violence. We got to take it by force. There's something that you have been married to that is not going to give you a divorce. <laughs> and, and if it do, it's going to require something. <laughs> Oh, so powerful. And so what I suggest to you, because of where you're going and because of what God is allowing you to walk into, I, desire, I, I, I really recommend that in this divorce process from your past, whatever your past wants from you, you let it have it. Don't even go to court over it. Give it all. Say, say, say listen, listen, you can have it all. You can... You can, you can have everything you want. I'm going to give you every everything I produced there. I'm going to let you have it back without a fight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> without a fight. I will, well, I'll let you have it. You tell your past, whatever you want, I, I, you can come get it. Because once I clear my space, God is going to fill it again. Once I get rid of all of the stuff that I thought was a blessing to me, I'm going to discover. You never discover how much of a burden something was until it leaves your space. Mm -hmm. That's when you know that I was putting money into this. Ooh, I, I, I think about something. I had a, a bad tire one time. Uh, you remember that time? We had a bad tire on a car, and we didn't necessarily have the finances to get a new tire. And so we thought one of the most incredible things was to keep quarters in the car so that every two days when that tire go down, <laughs> you remember that? You remember that? Yeah. We would go and pump that tire up. We thought we were winning because we kept pumping up that tire. Instead and, of saving them quarters to get a new tire. And we went three months. <laughs> quarters every two days. Yeah, every two days. Filling up that car. And we thought we were winning. That tire looked good. It just got a slight deformity and the air going out every two days. We timed it just right so we could go at the right time to refill it. Finally, that tire went all the way down on us. There was no more refilling. There was no more fix or flat that could work. And so what we did, decided to do is go get a new tire. And when I bought that new tire, as a matter of fact, I bought, I think, new tires, two for the front. And when I got those new tires on there, when I felt the ride of my car, I asked myself, why in the world 
that I spent three months going to fill up something that was going to be gone anyway. Wow, wow. The signs were it needed to be taken off. I didn't know the burden and the stress I was under when I was not in your presence because I had to be out of town and I left a tire on the car that could possibly go flat. I was worried. Will she call me and I'm out of town? And will she have somebody that can assist her if the thing go down on her? The moment I got my knee, that's when I realized how much of a burden I was carrying with this thing that I thought I was getting over on. Not even just the cost of the tire alone, but the cost of the worry, the, worry. the cost of the calculating, yes. you know, just yes. trying to make sure. Yes. It costs. It costs something. It costs something. And so you won't even know how much of a burden, how much stress you were carrying until you allow God to eliminate that problem. Until you allow God to, to, to relieve you of that thing that you thought you needed and you were investing into it with minimum results. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't drive that car out of town yeah. because I was afraid that if I drove it out, then I would lose and I'd be sitting on the side of the road. You were investing in some things that you cannot take it anywhere other than your current surroundings. You, it's, it's, it's not something that you can trust to take you on the long haul. Please hear me. It's, it's, it, you, you, are, you are aiding and abetting things that can't take you on the long haul. So today, your light has come. God is going to give you the fortitude to make a decision on something that you thought you had the power to, to make better. You never had the power to make better. Actually, it's been pulling you down for quite some time. Now, I'm going to end by saying this because it's 1255. Uh, yeah. Genesis chapter 23, uh, verse 1. It says, uh, and Abraham got up from mourning his dead. Abraham got up from, turn to the, let me, let me see that so I can, Genesis, what I said, Genesis when? No, 23. Watch this. This is going to be the release of some of you. I'm going to say this again. I just said this, but I feel it in the spirit again. I'm saying because there's going to be a release for some of you right now today. Uh, you've been you've been pulling, tugging on something that it's been expired, and you didn't know it's expired. It kept going down. You kept pumping it back up. Mm -hmm. It kept going down. You kept pumping it back up. You didn't know that it was telling you that it's time to get rid of me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I carried you a long way. It's perhaps it was something that allowed you some advantages. Near now, will dear to your heart. but will you stunt the next phase of your life being committed to something? that God allowed to be a scalpel for a season in your life. Here it is, Genesis 23, uh, verse 1. It says, and seven was 107 and 20 years old. These were the years of the life of seven. That's a long time, mm -hmm. right? And all of these years was with Abraham. Follow me now. Every year was with Abraham. So now, 127 years, and most of them years, you were with Ab Abraham. So that means that Abraham had grown mightily attached to you. Now watch the second verse says, and Sarah died in, Kaj in the Kajat armor. The same as Hebrew in the land of Cana. And Abraham came to mourn for Sarah and to weep for her. And Abraham, verse three says, Abraham stood up from before his dad and spake unto the sons of Heth, saying, I am a stranger sojourning with you. Give me a possession of burying place with you that I may bury my dead out of my sight. Here's what Abraham is saying. If I see something dead, it's because God has allowed it to die. I know she's been around me 127 years. She's been around me forever. I've grown attached to this. As a matter of fact, I've never been nowhere without her. This is what is called a ride or die chick. She lied for me to keep me safe, even though her lie would put her in jeopardy. She didn't care. She didn't mind. She did it for me. This was my uh, a place that the dream that I had, my son was birthed through her. God gave me a promise through her. God did everything through her. Everything came through her, but now she's dead. Can you imagine how Abraham felt when he experienced the death of Sarah, the thing that had been in his life his whole life? Please hear this. And so... Once he went and he mourned it, and he says, yes, yeah, she did. I've got the mourner. But then it says he gets up from the mourning 
of his death. And next thing he do is posture himself. He says, let me go and find a place to bury her out of my sight. In other words, if I don't put this out of my sight every day, I'm going to have to contend with it. And it's going to stop me from growing into my new life because I'm going to be stuck with this the rest of my life. Now, I'm going to have to hear my friends, my associates, my family, everybody tell me that I can't get over this. I, I'm going to hear you people even suggest to me, don't ever look for a new relationship because of the one that you have. I can call the rest of, her, rest of my life call her my wife even though she's gone. Please hear this because we're talking relations. I can say I shouldn't do this. I can feel guilty because of what I had in that. Or I could take the posture of Abraham and say, if it is gone, it's because God allowed it to go. And so now I've got to arise and shine because you can imagine Abraham being in a stupor, being messed up, being in a mindset that say, you don't want to do nothing, close off the window, shut the door, because what you had in a blessing and, and, and been the blessing in your entire life is now gone. But he had to make a decision. I got to move on. So I'm going to bury her out of my sight in a place that I don't. Because I know if I do think about it again tomorrow, if I see that spot, I'm going to go into the memories. I'm going to go into all of the, the good things we had. And the only thing it's going to do is make me feel a certain way. It's not going to produce life. Yeah. And so he went about the business to purchase a place for her to die. And the people of the land, because of who he was, decided they would give it to him and not make him buy it. And notice what he says. Watch the posture of Abraham. He says, no, 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 no. This is going to cost me something. I'm going to pay for this death. I'm going to pay the price that I need to pay because once I put it away, I want to pay everything I have to pay so I feel qualified that I put it away right because I'm about to move into something better. Whew, somebody today hearing me, you're about to move into something better when you allow that, that you called everything to die and put it away out of your sight. Amen, amen, amen. Now, this is such a blessed day because, again, there's some of you that's listening to me right now. You are being uh, pushed into a position. I'm not going to say a corner. You're being pushed into a position. And when God allows you to get into this position, there's certain decisions that have to be made there. Now, the way that you stay in the position is by your decision. Because in this decision, there are certain decision, uh, specific decisions you're going to make in this position. If you don't make the position in this season, you're probably not going to be uh, counted, I ain't going to say worthy, mature enough. That's the difference. See, we, we talk about who is counted worthy. I'm not talking about who's counted worthy. Because of death, burial, and resurrection of Christ, we were counted worthy. But will we be mature uh, enough to be positioned? Mm, mm, mm. That's a difference. Because I'm not going to go through the war of who's qualified through Christ. Everybody is. But maturity, God never puts more on us than we can handle. Our mature level is the very determining factor whether we stay in a position or whether God needs somebody that is mature enough to make the decision. That's what we are dealing with today. I got to end this. I want to say this once more and again. This season is a whole new season. There's people that's trying to facilitate a move of God. Be very careful to follow the instructions because you can have a good heart. You can have a good a, a, a plan to facilitate this move of God, to bring the presence of God again and not follow God's instruction and that it be it will cause debts to happen. That's not to be afraid. This is saying God desires it for the move, to, but this time it can't be from a diagram from the past. We're going to have to consult God. David, David, please hear me. David, the desire to move and have the presence of God once again in Jerusalem in his proper place. But he had a great desire. He had put together the celebration. He had put everything together. But the Bible says that he had not prepared a place for the anointing. 
and he did not follow the instruction. He, he put together the celebration. It's not enough difference. Just you being a different person. This is what the mindset of most uh, people that are starting something now. It's like, it's going to be different because it's me. No, it's not. The difference can't be just as a different person. It has The difference had to be I consulted God on what it is specifically I do to facilitate this move because if I don't, what happens is I follow the design of my mentor. And when I follow the design of my mentor, I will actually put my hands to do something that God did not sanction and never think about it. Never think. And so David is confused because he's got a good idea, a good heart, and he experienced in depth in this move of God. And God says, it's because you didn't follow my instructions. You had a good idea. You wanted the presence. I wanted to be there. But I'm so specific in the season. That's why we got to be very aware and to discern that it's not about a gift or a calling. I am very, very, very specific about this. I'm very, I'm very specific about this. Uh, gifts and callings are without repentance. I can be gifted. I can call your name. Oh, I can do, I was reared in it for my whole life. But here's what the difference is. I am not going to allow the enemy to convince me that I'm right with God because I'm gifted. Can't do it. Because this move of God has got to be on the back of not gifted people, but consecrated people. It's got to be people that it is incumbent upon you that I have made the changes in my life so that when God rests on me, I don't die in the process. I don't die in the process of this good move. I don't die in the process of me wanting to do something great for God, but not following this instruction. That's why. <laughs> that's why Jesus, the Bible says they found Jesus away praying to himself. The son of God praying to himself. Why? Because he got news. What was the news? John had been beheaded. When John has been beheaded, you know what that means? I got next. Well, oh. on the way. <laughs> hey man, let's pray together. Let's pray together. Let's pray together. Thank you so much. Let's pray. John was the forerunner. If John is gone, come on. That means that I'm here. The time has been passed. Yes. All right. Father, we thank you today for this word. Thank you for the blessings of this word. Thank you for those that heard this word. Thank you for allowing people to go back to let this resonate in the spirit again. Thank you for being used by you. We humbly submit ourselves to the call. We thank you right now for the blessings that comes with the call. We, we thank you right now, God, for all things being made perfect in you. Thank you for the sons that you're raising up in the, in the daughters and you're raising up in this season that's going to hear the specifics and not operate at the fault, not do it because they sing it done, but ask in this season, what is it specifically that you desire for us in this season? Arise and shine for thy light has come. The revelation is coming. The revelation is coming. The revelation is coming. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. We thank God. We thank God again for the blessings of God. We thank God again for what he's doing in this season. Gear yourself up. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. You got next. Mm. You got next. Spend this time asking God, what is it in specifics that you call me to do? How do I facilitate or how do I handle this move of God. <laughs> and, and the biggest part of the handling of this move of God is that you don't put your hand to do what God didn't sanction. Uzzai put his hand to do. And other, uh, in other words, it's a picture of Uzzai saying, I'm going to put my touches on it. I'm going to put my twist on it. Actually, God don't need your twist on what he's already perfected. He just need people that are ready to facilitate the move. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, all right. Uh, you got anything? It's time. It's time. 
We are, so, I'm telling you, we are so gracious to God. We are so excited. We're so gracious to God for our, just allowing us, you know, to be a part, just to being in a season where we know or, or, or we are interested. It's interesting for young men and young women to be interested in uh, in the in the move of God. I just want to be a part of what He's doing. I just, I just, and, and to admonish everybody that has been called to God. He's going to allow you to transcend. He's going to allow you to, to overcome. And to them that overcome, he will give them the privilege of sitting in his throne. But there's some things that you're going to have to overcome. It's called maturity things. You've already been qualified. You're going to have to overcome. And so it's very important. I, I preach it everywhere I go that, that, that I, I tell everybody I come in contact with that this is an unusual time in God. I cannot approach him by default settings. Yeah. Just by that alone, I you I'm usually out of place with him. Because I was gonna teach today how mysteries are being unfolded. Uh, there's a, a definition, a definite plan of God that uh, they couldn't have known before. Why? Because it was not revealed until now. Scripture says it very clearly. It wasn't even revealed yet. So it's not it's not strange that they don't see or they haven't heard. It's not, that's not a, a big deal because it wasn't revealed. Now, you're going to have to see yourself in the position of God. You were called for such a time as this. Now, you can limit that by saying, I always wanted to do what my mentor had done, and so I'm going to repeat that. Or you can say, God, what is it that you called me to do? And then you'll see the hand of God. Thank you so much, y'all. Thank everybody that is in the house today. For those of you, again, that want to sow into us, uh, uh, you can go to Cash App, N-O-B-C. You stuck it up there. You stuck it up there. You stuck it up there. I'm so excited about right now. I told you, I've got a, I've got an open page right now. Amen. I've been challenged. There's a lot of things. Some people say, ask me, you know how they ask me the question. Pastor, uh, why do you come up with that stuff? You see them. What in the world is that? What do you, What do you come up with that? You know, I what I what I present before God is, and I was reared in this my whole life, and so the first thing God told me, He says, "You've been robbed of the robbers." A very interesting statement from God. What is robbed? Rob? He said, "You've been robbed of the people that can rob you of what I'm about to say." And that's 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 people that you admire, admire so much that everything they say. Before you even hear God, you already take that tone. So I was robbed of the robbers, number one. And and number two, uh, uh, I have what is called an open page. It's like on my on this thing, I don't have nothing on it when I come before God. I don't come with a preconceived idea. I come with an empty page. And you know what I say to God? Very interesting. Right now. Mm. <laughs> now that's what a dual definition right now r-i-g-h-t yeah w-r-i-t-e and right now god says you come before an empty page he'll say right now he'll allow you to walk into something right now and he'll start rewriting your life right yeah. now My god. so come before him with an empty page and he says right now. right now right now it's immediate Come, I bring everything from there and pull it into your now. And that's all he's asking for a yielded vessel. An empty page. An empty, empty page. An empty mm. page. A yielded wow. what? Vessel. A yielded vessel. Why? Because if you bring a yielded empty vessel, what does he do? He pours stuff into it. And the more you have emptied yourself, uh, the more opportunity you have of him filling in. You know what I'm saying? And whatever is the whatever portion is greatest is going to influence the after things. <laughs> so if I only take my uh, vessel and empty it and rid myself of this much, God can only pour something on the top if he would grace me there. But what comes out when someone tastes it is going to be more me than God. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so so if I really want the flavor of God, I really need to totally empty myself so that he can
totally fill me with what he desires. Pour it all of more of him and less of me is what I need. I need your spirit. That's the song saying that. More of you and less of me. So I need to empty me out so that he would have space to put himself in. But I just come before him as an empty vessel. <laughs> Here's what the rule is, though. He won't put new wine into old wine skins. <laughs> he won't pour it in there. In other words, in this wine skin, you better be able to pour it out everything old anyway, because he's not going to uh, coexist with the old you. He don't want the old you. It's, it's a new year. It's a rebirth. Year. And so be very careful that you get rid of everything so that he can pour you and fill you with the new thing. Yeah. Because uh, he says it's a possibility that if I put me in that old mindset, it's going to tear some things up. <laughs> and he says, I'm not really interested in the vessel. What your mama say about that? He says, I'm interested in the oil. Come on. The precious oil. What did she say? She said, you, you were robbed, but she was what? And your mom was held up. Held up. up. <laughs> Thank you, mom. I was robbed and my mom was held up. Amen. And she was held hostage for quite okay. some time. Come on. Mm. She was held hostage for quite some time. Thank you guys so much. This has been such a pleasure for us to share with you guys. It, it's such a grace moment for us to share. We love sitting in these seats. What are these seats? The seats are not just the, the physical part, but the seat that's set before such incredible people. I always say this, and, it, and it's going to be echoed even more. If I say anything, if she says anything profound, it's not because of we are so all of that. It's because there's profound people listening. And God always speaks at the level of the listen. <laughs> so if there's something said profound, it's God saying that you are profound. And we are thankful because you are so, uh, so who you are that God allowed us to say what we said. All because of the people. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We are out of here. This is a beautiful weekend. I don't know what it looks like in your area, but I'm I'm here to tell you, uh, you can think yourself happy. Come on. So think yourself happy. Paul said, actually, say, I think myself happy. I'm in a bad situation, but I'm thinking myself happy. Come on. And so for those of you that are in the Little Rock area, 1111 West 7th Street, downtown Little Rock, Arkansas, you can meet me there at 9 a.m. 9 a.m. on this Sunday. I'm opening up the word of God that's going to be so profound. And I'm not kidding with you. I got something that I've already been given to to share, and I'm ready to share. Now, uh, about 30 minutes from now, you can go to my YouTube page, Pastor G, at Network of Believers, Network of Believers, and you can view this again, and you can share with your best of friends and everybody else that needs to hear. All right? We are out of here and we are into our weekend you ready to go baby she says she's ready to go so if she ready to go i'm ready to go to holla